Hey everyone, welcome back to Camp Keyframe. My name is Bas and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how you can animate this character illustrated by Olga Semklo. So first off, thank you Olga for sending me this beautiful illustration. Uh, I reached out to her because I loved her work. You can see it on screen now here on her dribble page. And it's just amazing, uh, beautiful colors, beautiful characters. And she sent me this to uh, animate. She made it a while back, uh, you can see it right here. And I'm going to animate this today. So uh, please give her a follow or a like on Dribble or Instagram, whatever. Um, yeah, thanks, Olga. So we're going to jump in After Effects here. And here you can see my final render. We have this character that's coming up from the ground with some uh, flowers around him. And he's looking around a little bit, looking to the left, looking to the right. There's some highlights on his face and on his hand. And we're going to recreate uh, this today, like some of it. I'm going to show you the basic principles on how to animate this guy and um, a little bonus on how to animate those bouncy uh, plants as well at the end. Uh, so first off, we're going to start with uh, the character. Uh, we're gonna, uh, let's first see our final render comp here. Uh, which, which layers do we have? We have our background layer, we have our character layer here, and then we have all of these plants and our background again, just to serve as kind of a mask here. We have our floor layer and we have these effects, which we'll show you. I'll show you later on. So first off, we're going to start with our clean slate with our character without any of these branches or flowers or anything like that. Just our clean slate with nothing happening in here. And um, what we're going to use is the plugin called Joysticks and Sliders. And this is a plugin that you can buy online, which I highly recommend. It's great for doing character animation with. So what this does is we're going to create a joystick uh, just like when playing video games, which you can just uh, move around on the screen and your character will follow that joystick. It will move around along with it. And for that, we're going to need to make five extreme states of this character. Um, the character looking um, to the front, like he, like he is right now, to the right, to the left, to the uh, up and down. And we need to make those extremes within the first, the first five keyframes of this uh, layer or this, of this comp here. And then we can put them all into a joystick. So we're going to zoom in to the fullest here to see all our keyframes. So select all your layers, no, not the floor. We're going to lock that first and we have the background as well locked, yeah. So we're going to select all of these layers and then um, go press P on your keyboard to open the all position parameters here. And I'm gonna click on the stopwatch to make a keyframe on the first frame. I'm gonna press the R to open the rotation for everything. So click on stopwatch as well to make a keyframe for those as well. So what this means that if I press U, we open both of them. Now we can animate our position and our rotation uh, for this character. And this is almost enough to cr create the full thing. Uh, the only thing what we're going to do uh, later on as well is um, add some uh, animation to the path of our hair and of our ear lines here. So on this hair line here, we're gonna, we're gonna select our hair layer. Uh, let's see where it is. And we're gonna open it up, we go to contents, group one, path one and then path and then make a keyframe on that first frame as well. I'm gonna do the same thing with this little ear line here. Where is it? And it's on top here. Yeah, open that up. Go to contents, group one, path one, click on that stopwatch and do the same thing with this one. No, oh, the ear line left, ear, li ear line right, I think this one. Open it up, go to contents, group one, path one and keyframe. So now we have all our keyframes for the items we want to animate on this first frame. So now we're going to move to our second frame by just going there, or you can also press command on the keyboard and then the right arrow key, and then select all of your layers. And then in my joysticks and sliders uh, window here, we can have this, we have this origin button. If I click that, it will copy all of the keyframes from our first origin frame to the keyframe that I'm currently selecting. So when we are right here, we're going to move uh, the stuff we need to the right. So it's looking, looking to the right side of the screen. So first off, we're going to select all of these, uh, these layers. So the eyebrows, eyes, whoops. We don't, I'm going to lock the arm for now. No, I, I will, yeah, I will lock it because it's annoying. Um, select these layers here and this one as well and just move them to the right of the screen. And then this cheek is a bit too much, so let's move that a bit back. So we have this little bit of parallax. So if you 
look already it's looking to the right already a little bit so uh, what we're going to do with our ear here let's also lock this arm and this arm because I'm selecting them which is annoying if we have this ear layer here I'm going to drag that one to the left a little bit because it's kind of moving behind the head when he's moving to the right when look to the right so move it to the left and this one we're going to alter our path here so yeah I'm going to select my pen tool select this point and then drag that in a little bit and make that a bit smaller and zoom out here so like it's moving behind the head a little bit and then this one can go to the to the right a little bit as well because it's also coming forward and then make this guy here also a little bit in like that so so now he is looking to the right side of the screen all right which looks great and let's let's do the hair as well uh, let's search it in here where is it yeah over there we have our path here and we're going to select this point here and drag that to the right like that so we already have this and then this top part needs to go to the left a bit then Or maybe like that maybe that's enough yeah so now it's kind of looking like it's looking to the right side okay cool and what I want to show you as well for let's close this all up uh, how I've parented all of this so we have this uh, his eye and his eyebrows and his nose and all of these elements are parented to this head layer here head main let's make this yellow and let's just call this face and um, so this face Everything here on his face is parented to this face layer. So if I move this face over here, everything moves along with it. And this layer is then parented to our neck layer here. And our neck, if I move that, then the face moves along with it. And also the neck shadow is also parented to the neck. It has a set matte effect on it, by the way. Uh, so it's only visible within this uh, neck layer. Um, and that's parented to our body. And our body is this main shape here, which controls everything because the neck is parented to that and the face to the neck. So that means that when the body moves, the neck moves, so the face moves. And we have this little line here. It's also connected to our body. And we have these arms here. Let's unlock them for now. We have our, we have our, our normal arm here. And we have our forearm and our hand and the shadow as well and the hand. And they're parented to each other. So we have this arm. And I put the rotation point, uh, the anchor point right there, because it's mostly in the middle, but I put it right there. So when I rotate this, and it rotates from that point. And we did the same thing for this layer, put the rotation point over there, and for the hand as well, put it over there. So, uh, and that's this one, of course, is parent to the body. So that just make sure to parent everything correctly. Um, let's f let's um, lock them back up, because they're annoying. Uh, so now what we did, let's open this everything up to the second frame. The guy is looking to the right, but I want this to move a bit more. So I'm also going to move his whole body to the right and make his face turn a little bit. Uh, I put the anchor point for his face on the bottom. So that is his pivot point as well. And if I am uh, put go to rotation, I'm going to drag this to the right a little bit. So when you do this, make sure that your neck is sticking uh, up. Uh, so because we don't have... Uh, this little this gap going here so uh, just make sure we have a little bit of overlap uh, going on there so looking to the right like that and i want this this body as well i have the position there the keyframe now the anchor point down here as well so also give this some rotation to the right like that and then also maybe position to the right a little bit so it's really like leaning to the right side of the screen when he's looking to the right so we give it a bit more exaggeration like that i like that and one thing I'm going to add as well is if this, when this uh, ear is moving behind his head, I want it to go a, bit, a little bit darker. So I'm going to go to my ear, where is it? I'm going to right click it, go to layer styles and then color overlay. And I'm going to open that color overlay up. Uh, there you go, layer styles, color overlay and make that black, first of all. And then I'm going to go to my first frame here. And here I'm going to put the opacity to 0% like that and make a keyframe for that and then on the second uh, frame here I'm going to put this at 10% so now it's a little bit darker when it's behind his head which is nice so this is also so make sure to make keyframes for these as well 
Um, so now we're going to go to our, because we're done here with this, this state is done. This is our extreme st state of looking to the right side. I'm going to go one frame further. I'm going to select everything and then, oh, and don't forget to unlock our arm layer first. Select everything and then click on origin again and it will copy the first keyframes from the first frame to this third frame again. So we're going to do the same thing with these uh, things as we did with our, um, uh, oh, I think I see that this is not going correctly. Uh, where is it? It's not created a path for us here. Weird. Okay. So um, we're going to do the same thing here. Select all of these face layers and we're going to <laughs> lock these annoying arms and hands again because they're in the way. Select these guys, his face. I'm going to drag them to the Oops, let's drag this to the left side of the screen here. I'm going to put this one to the back a little bit and this one a little bit as well. And this will move to this side right now to make this curve a bit like that. And maybe make this go to the right a little bit. Not too bumpy there. Okay, and then go back and forth between your first frame and the frame you're working on to see if everything is like moving correctly. I think this is a bit too needs to be a bit more bumpy right now so like that so yeah now it's to the to the front and then to the left uh, let's go for these things here i'm going to pull them in make them a bit smaller and then this one like that okay and i'm going to actually copy this keyframe here and put it over there. Uh, all right. Why doesn't? Oh, it's not doing that. I need this one. Path. Yeah. So great. So we're looking to the left here. That's looking very good. And then go to this air and select our layer style. Where is it? Open this one up. Go to layer styles. Copy that. Um, and then go to this air here and paste it. Command V. And open this up here color overlay and put these keyframes to the front and on this first keyframe I want this to be zero as well and on this one it's to be zero as well for this and then here we're gonna go for 10 percent yeah when it's back there okay and then also this head make it a, give it a bit of rotation and his body of course rotate that and put it to the left and also make sure that your body is overlapping with the floor a bit so we don't get gaps like this. So just make it uh, long enough in this stripe as well. So like that. So now it's looking to the front, to the right and to the left, which is looking really good. Next frame up, we're going to select everything like this, select all and then origin, paste origin over there. And now this is going to look up on this position. So we're going to select all of these things. And of course, these stupid hands again, ruining my day. Get lost. Okay. And then I'm going to move them up here. And this one, we're going to move this up a little bit as well and make this a bit so we can, re you can reach it. And maybe pull the hair down a little bit because it's also like going up behind the head a little bit. And make this, let's turn these ears and these little lines here uh, down a bit when he's looking up. So down, up, normal, up. Yeah, okay. So that's already fine. And then uh, let's move this body up as well a little bit. So now he's, when he's moving, moving up, he's all, his whole body is looking up as well a little bit. Very nice. And then we have our next frame. And we're going to select everything, unlock them, and go to our origin, uh, paste them all in there. And then we have this um, guy need to look down. Uh, so let's select all of these layers again. God damn. Stupid arms. I can move them down, of course, as well. But yeah, it's too late. Let's just lock them. Should have thought of that earlier. Okay, select all of them. And let's move these ones down. And then these lines and these ears a little bit up 
uh, oh, not too much, like don't want to overlap with the hair. I don't like that, just like that. And then have this uh, go a bit down here as well. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, and then have this body move down a little bit as well. So we have our normal right, left, up. That's a really, that's a bit too much like that. And then down, which is nice. Okay, cool. So everything, all, now on all of these frames, we have these, um, we have all of these five keyframes. Even if they're not doing anything, we need to have those keyframes there. So now select all of these layers and then go to my joysticks and sliders and click on joysticks tool. And it will, uh, let's call this uh, control. Okay, and this will now, uh, as you can see, is doing the math behind the scenes and it will create a joystick for you. And it's done. And we have this joystick, this null layer, and we have this little line around it. So let's move that to the left here. And now with this null layer, you can move everything. Wow, really cool, right? So uh, the joystick moves his whole body and his head. So he's moving left, up, down, bottom, and he's kind of filling in all the spaces we didn't create. So we made uh, this part we made, and this one, and this one, and the bottom one, and then everything in between, he's kind of filling up um, himself, which is really cool, really nice. So now what you can do is just parent or parent um, keyframe this null because I can go to position here, zoom out a little bit and create a keyframe here, go to the right and then make him look uh, to the to the top uh, top right a little bit. And then there you go. And the, with, with this way, you can uh, animate this whole character, which I did in this body rig here just to save some time. I made some of these, um, uh, I made his head and his body animate. I also made him go come up from the bottom of the screen. And what I did there is just selected this body and give this some position. But the cool thing is, everything is rigged to our joysticks layer, but you can still individually move all of these layers. You can still animate this arm or this head or whatever you want. It will, it will, still keep following your joystick, but you can animate them yourself as well. So I, I give this uh, body a little position going up and have this face look down a bit here, uh, start down and then look up when he's moving up the screen and then make him go to the right, uh, the little pause here so he stays in the middle and then we go to the right up. And what I did here, as you can see, is kind of bouncing, dipping down a bit when he's going up. So in, when you're animating, uh, moving this thing around, you can just have these handles here to make, instead of going straight, just give this some nice curves uh, because then it looks a lot more realistic and not too static. Uh, and then you just make these uh, keyframes and then here copy this one to here as well. So it kind of have a little pause in between, go to the left and also this little, this big, this dip down here and then pause a little bit and go look down a little bit and then going back to the middle. And then here we have this body moving down with position and his head is kind of looking up um, a little bit. And what I did as well here was animate this arm. So what you can see, we have these little elements here, these forearm and his hand and his arm. If I open it up, I just gave this some position as well. So when he's in there, like the arm is a little bit in front of his face here. And when he's moving up, it's going up. So it's a little bit of a parallax effect in his arm. And then when he's going down, we have this, I gave him some delay that like his arm is like reaching a bit up from the gravity. He's like a bit less heavy than his body. Like it's going up a little bit. As you can see, there's a bit more distance between his arm and his, or his hand and his uh, face. So that's uh, the, the, a really easy way to animate this whole character and give it some, some life. Uh, it looks really, really cool already. And it looks like it's like it's a living, a living being. Uh, a really quick and easy thing we can do to give it a bit more character is go to our eyes, mm, our eye left, and go to the scale tool. Uh, press S, go to scale, zoom in a bit here, and then go to the, let's go like two frames, and let's check, uncheck this. So I only want to scale it um, on one axis, like this, to make it close a bit, to make it zero, or maybe maybe 10%, and then go back here, and then make it 100. Um, so 100, two frames later, 10%, two frames later, 100% again. So select them, give this some easy ease, just for good measure. 
and then it's like bling, it's blinking and it's going to do that the same thing with this eye here scale two frames later this one at 10% and two frames later 100 and give this an easy ease and okay and now position them at the right timing so maybe it's always cool to have him blink while he's moving to the other side so maybe here oh they're actually perfect already like a little blink in between there so okay nice like that and maybe here as well copy them paste them Boop. a little blinky blink and then maybe here as well Bling. bye bye okay and maybe a bit earlier when he's coming into the screen hello copy paste blink 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 yeah so now it gives a bit of a bit more life to this guy and what i did as well because in the illustration of uh, olga you can see that she had some some of these nice highlights here as well um, so what we're going to do with that is really easy as well uh, let's go to our normal state here for a sec like when he's looking forward yeah i'm going to go into my let's close this up go to my pen tool and select just kind of recreate the shape that she made you can all of course use her uh, perfect shape that she made an illustrator i'm just going to recreate it a, a bit faster here let's call this white um, Oh, let's call this highlight highlight all right i'm going to parent this to our uh, face so it's our face i can see it where is it or is it how, oh head main let's call let's call this face okay highlight put that above our face here and parent that to the face let's just make this face yellow and our highlight here is now as uh, only um, it's now parented to this uh, the face when it moves it moves along with it, which is good. But it's not visible only within the face. So we're going to use a set matte effect for that. Select our highlight and then go to your effects. I'm going to search for it actually. Set matte. It's between it's uh, yeah that, that one and then uh, you can select our face here and then it's only visible within that face with this effect here. Uh, but I also need it on this left ear. So duplicate this highlight and just call this highlight ear and this highlight face. And this set mat, we're going to change it to our ear left like that. So now it's visible on that uh, ear there. Really nice. And what we can do as well, because what I did here is it's not perfectly parented to our face because when it looks to the right, it's a it's a it's lagging a bit behind and what i did there why i did that is because um it's not perfectly uh the highlight is not perfectly snapped to to his face of course so we're gonna uh, let's parent this ear highlight to our face by the way so this controls uh, everything now um and i'm gonna zoom in here and what you can do then is when this guy is looking to the to the right here on this keyframe i'm gonna give this some position and then on this side here, on this side here, we're going to move it a little bit to the left and then select both of these. And in my flow plugin, I have this button here, which can read in, if I select some other uh, parameters and I can click this button, it will read the, the easing from these two keyframes and place them there. So we already have the exact same movement. So now the, the highlight is going a bit to the left. So it's a bit more, uh, a bit less static and a bit more dynamic like it's actually a highlight coming down um, we can do the same with the hand of course just create this nice little white shape it doesn't have to be pretty and let's call this hand highlight and i'm going to put it above the hand here parent it to the hand and let's copy the set matte effect from this layer here uh, highlight and then select hand boom and you can do the same the same kind of animation with that with that of course um, animating it so that it, it doesn't stick perfectly to the thing so that's uh, the basic uh, um, character animation and what you can also do of course is let's say you want to alter the animation you made uh, you, you don't like how he is when he's looking up uh, you can just go back and change them 
uh, click, click on your joystick layer here and then go to this button to unbind all your layers and it will put back all of those five extreme state keyframes in your layers here if I open them up there you go and let's say I want this guy when he looks up I want his I don't know nose to be uh, further up or anything like that uh, and when he is looking to the right I want his nose to be more to the Oh, I want his nose to be more to the right. You can change anything you want and just then select, select it back, select everything and then click on the rebind layers and it will bind them back and then you've added your changes. So now the, the control layer works again and you've added uh, some new animation to it. Uh, so now I'll also show you how I animated these flowers here because they're kind of nice and bouncy. It's really easy. Um, you can just give this, uh, start with this branch here Let's open it up, go to add and go with trim paths. Um, I also already put it in there earlier, as you can see. Um, and start at zero like that. So now it's move, it's growing up and give this some nice easing, something like this. And then these ones, I put the anchor point right there. So this is the rotation, the pivot point. And we're going to scale them up from zero and then uh, let's give this some other easing here. It's, it's way too slow. Yep, and then give them some rotation as well. And the rotation, I want them to start down here and then like rotate and scale and rotate up a little bit. And I'm gonna give that some Excite with my Motion plugin. So go to Motion and then Excite. If you wanna have it, buy it, it's, it's amazing. Uh, click on Excite and then it moves up and it bounces a little bit like that which is cool uh, the same thing with this this little guy here scale that up to 100 from zero with this thingy rotate that uh, let's see down a little bit and then some excite on it excite works for everything makes everything more exciting okay Let's see where this one starts here. Right there, that's a bit too early. Yeah. Something like this. Maybe even earlier, not get the timing right. Okay. Nice, all right. Then we have um, this layer here. We're going to put the anchor point over there. Uh, and not here because I want this one to scale up and what I'm going to do is please if I put the anchor point here and I scale it down it will scale to that point and I've uh, my white line and I have this white fill and this leaf fill which is this yellow shape here we have this white fill which also has a set mat effect on it it's only visible within this yellow shape here and the same with the white line and they are all three of them are parented to my leaf outline so it's a separate separate layer and I put the anchor point here and, and scale that down uh, of, or up uh, to 100 from zero so now you can see that it moves to that point here and what you can also see which is something that I put on of there on there earlier is that when it scales up the line stays uh, the same thickness as the other lines it's not scaling uh, down not, it's not um, becoming a smaller or a, a more thin line uh, because I put an expression on it, but first, um, first things first, put the um, timing right here. It can be a bit faster. Let's see here what we need to time this a bit later. It's still not good. Not good, not good. Yeah, that's okay. And what we can do here, if I go into this into this layer and open it up and go to my contents, uh, group one, and then stroke one, and my stroke width, uh, I've put this expression on it. I will put it down in the description below. I can, I'm can i not going to explain the whole thing right now. I have, a, I have made a separate tutorial in the past about this, but what this actually does is when this layer scales, it uh, scales the uh, thickness of the stroke accordingly in the opposite direction. So when this thing is at 100%, my, my stroke width is four. Um, but if I, uh, let's see, let's type in stroke width here. 
Uh, if I move back, you can see that you can see, um, oh, I need to put my right layer, of course. You can see that my stroke width here is at four. When I move back a little bit in time, it, it moves up, it becomes thicker because it's reading the values of our scale and then like inverting the stroke width to that. So that's a really nice neat little trick to keep your stroke widths uh, nice and the same uh, thickness always. So this, this is our basic animation of this plant right here. Where does it start? Here. Like it's growing up a little bit, but it's a little bit boring uh, right now. Uh, so what I did here was, uh, as well, was create some um, bending effect with CC Bendit. So yellow flower, let's go into my body rig and just put my yellow flower in there like that. And then only see that one. And what we're going to do here uh, with this yellow flower is I'm going to go to my um, help and type in CC Bendit. And I'm going to put our start position right there at the bottom of the of the plant and our uh, end position, our end thingy, anchor point key, I don't know what it is, uh, put it here. And if I select my bend thing, then here, there you go, you can make this bend really nice. And what I did, I'll show you in my um, flowers comp here, where we have our final comp. And I open this up. And if you bend it here, um, as you can see here, I put it here, the bending at minus 12%. And, and then here it is six, and then minus six, and then two, uh, and zero. And so that, like that you can make a little bit of bouncy effect uh, yourself with the CC Bandit tool. I also made a, a separate tutorial about that as well, uh, a, a little while back, so I'll put it down in the description as well to go a bit more in depth on how I made that. So, and I also, um, if you look at all these layers here, um, they're all together, I gave them all um, uh, a position up, all of these flowers. And what I wanted to do as well, is I want these flowers to be, because in, in when you look at the design, um, on the character, they are white, but they are, they are of course black flowers. So um, what I did here was, uh, let's go for this layer here. Which one is it? The flower left. I duplicated it here just to make a, a new a copy of it. And I gave this, if you go into my layer styles, I give this a color overlay and it's just white. Uh, so it's just exactly the same comp here, but it's, it goes a white overlay. So if I, uh, and if I turn this, the, the character, the alpha mat off here, you can see that it's just a completely white flower uh, moving um, at the same time as the other one. And then I put, I duplicated my character comp, which I created in here as well. I duplicated it and put it above this white, um, white, white flower here. So let's just hide them or open them again. Uh, put them above it and then put the alpha mat to the character here. And then you can only see that white uh, overlay flower on this character comp. So that's how we created those. And then uh, parent everything together or parent everything, time everything together. So give them all some position keyframes and make them move up. And also don't do, make them all uh, go at the same time. And okay, let's see these lines are like this line as well. This is just a white line. Uh, which is like going up with, I think, only uh, trim paths here. Yeah, that's like only moving up here, as you can see. And its parent is also, there's another character comp here, and it's alpha mat as well. So it's like really basic, easy stuff, but putting everything together and combining everything really makes this character look, look really nice. And, you know, it's a lot of work to put all of these, uh, animate all of these flowers and put the CC bandit effect on it and animate everything, all of these keyframes, but it's worth it in the end. And the character is moving. We have this highlight, we have his eyes blinking. We have these, these branches going. So that's a, a really nice way you can uh, animate this whole thing. And then in my final render comp, I um, put this, as I said earlier, this background uh, layer on it. Uh, it's just this, this solid, the same as the background, just put it way down here and then put the floor layer above it. So everything is moving behind this uh, thing. So it, it serves as a mask kind of, like a little bit of cheating, but it's, it's everything is moving behind there. And then we have this effect layer, um, because when we um, look at this, it, it all looks uh, very cool. It animates nicely, but it's, it's missing some, some life to it. It's missing some texture or anything. Um, let's just make it uh, render out a little bit. Um, 
as you see, it's it's a bit too smooth. It's a bit too it's a bit too nice mostly. So if I turn on this effect, you can see that a whole a uh, lot of stuff changes. It's a bit heavy. But what I added here are three things. Let's put on put off all of them. We have our noise layer, which I mostly do. If I turn it on, you can see there's a little bit of uh, like grainy noise effect on it, so they make it a bit less flat. Turn off the color noise and um, make it five percent. So that's just a normal noise effect. Then we have our posterized time effect. And what this does, because this animation is made at 25 frames per second, but I put my frame rate at 12, 12 here, with my posterized time effect. And that makes it all go a little bit more like choppy and like a little bit more hand drawn. So it is less smooth, but I think that's a good thing in this case. As you can see, it's a bit less smooth and it looks like, yeah, it looks like it's hand drawn or something. And then I also put some turbulent displace effect on it with an amount of 30 and a size of two and put the complexity at 2.9. And what I did here was because what this will do is give all of your layers a little bit of this, um, you know, grungy effect and not make it all too tight and too, too clean. And what I did here to make it move as well, you can go to your uh, random seed options here. Uh, let's see if I go to in my effects. Uh, to a random seed um, and just gave this a little uh, give this an expression uh, of posterized time as well so it it, it uh, moves every six frames so posterized time uh, six and then time time 750 just to make everything move a little bit uh, as well um, so that's uh, some nice effects to make this whole thing come together uh, nicely um, so everything together makes a really cool scene and uh, you know gives it a lot of life and then Goodbye. Um, one thing I want to tell you as well, what you can do with joysticks and sliders, which is really nice to know. Uh, let's see, I've made this uh, this guy here. And let's put this down. And I'm going to select all of these layers. I'm going to comp them together and call them uh, guy final. Okay. Uh, but now my joysticks and sliders thingy is gone here. Uh, I want to able, be able to control this guy in this comp above it and not go into this here because maybe I have some um, some different elements that I want to animate here. I want this guy to react on those elements, but I can't do that if I need to animate this inside here because then I won't see those elements. <gasps> so what I can do is uh, go in here, go to my window and then my joysticks and sliders and then select my joysticks here and then go to move joysticks to parent comp and I can select clean slate because that's the comp that this guy final is in to parent. Um, oh, I need to select this one to parent and then go to my clean slate and then it's right there. So don't use it in here anymore because it's red now. Uh, so that means no, don't use it. But in here we have this same thing um, with this, uh, with the animations in here. So um, that's a really cool way to um, use, my, use your uh, joystick sliders in the layer above, in the comp above, so you can have some more control uh, over it. So yeah, that's it. Uh, sorry for maybe the uh, hectic uh, <laughs> tutorial today, but it's a lot, there's a lot of stuff going on in this animation and I don't want to go through every little detail, every little piece. I don't want to show you how I animated all of these flowers and all of these leaves because it, it, it would just take way too long. I, it took me a couple of hours to animate this whole thing. Uh, and I'm not going to show you all the things. Like if you animate one flower, you can do the same thing with the other flowers as well. It's the same, it's the same effect. And um, you, you only need to rig your character once with the joystick sliders plugin, and then you can um, animate it however you would like yourself with the null it's creating with the joystick. So um, I hope you learned something from this. I hope you can uh, animate your characters as well with this uh, same technique. And I hope to see you on the next tutorial on Camp Keyframe. Thank you. Bye bye.